Hey everybody, Natsu's here. Just doing some guest me work with Rasbam. Uh, hopefully first of a series of uh, tutorials on some of the systems of the Strike Eagle as they come out. Uh, and this will allow uh, the users to hopefully get ahead of the game and, and uh, understand what the uh, systems are and how to use them before the, air, before the module hits the store. And then that way when it does get here, uh, people will be ready to jump in and start flying it and start enjoying it right away. It's not going to be all-inclusive, but it'll at least hit some of the highlights of the systems uh, as we go. Before I go into the, the system today, I just want to say up, up front that I'm super excited that uh, the module that uh, Rasbam is uh, coming out with is looking really good. From what I've seen, it's, it's, it's really impressive. Uh, they've done a super good job of uh, replicating the Suite 4 systems with the documentation that they, they have. And uh, from what I can see, it's going to be fantastic. It's still not finished, obviously. Uh, there's still a lot to go, but that's part of the reason why uh, it's taken the time that it does is because they're really striving to get it right and uh, they want to really give you a good product uh, pretty much from day one. Uh, it, uh, if you've looked at the Discord, uh, obviously it's not going to be 100% uh, complete with every single system that the Strike Eagle has on day one, but they're going to give you the, the vast majority of the systems uh, and weapons uh, to start off with. So I think you guys are going to be super impressed. It's, uh, it's a really good module uh, so far, and it's only going to get better as it goes. So uh, be patient. Uh, trust me, I'm as excited as you are, and I'm as impatient as you are to get it. Uh, I'm ready to start flying missions right away. Anyway, let's jump into the first system. So what I want to talk about today are the, uh, are the main screens for the, the jet. These are the, the primary way that we interface with the jet and how we do the, the mission uh, whether it be air to ground or air to air or a combination of both uh, as we go. So these are, these are super powerful tools. And yeah, other jets have these, but the, I think you're going to see the Strike Eagle takes it to a whole new level in terms of how it's integrated with the systems and also in terms of how user-friendly it is uh, to be able to, to get through different uh, displays and be able to manipulate data. So we're going to talk about the uh, the uh, screens themselves. So the, they're very similar to what uh, you'll see in other DCS uh, modules, uh, A10s, F16, F18, etc. Um, so nothing super new here in terms of the layout, but uh, the nomenclature is important. So the the monochrome screens in the Strike Eagle are called MPDs or multi-purpose displays. The color one is the MPCD or the multi-purpose color display. Uh, they're named different things in other jets, but they're essentially the same uh, throughout. In terms of layout itself, uh, the push buttons, uh, you'll hear that uh, talked about. And again, it's similar to other jets, but the layout slightly different. In the Strike Eagle, uh, 20 push buttons around the bezel, uh, similar to other jets, but the, the numbering system is slightly different. So we start with PB1 uh, up here in the upper left corner, and it goes PB1 through 5 down the left-hand side, and then six through 10 on the bottom, 11 through uh, 15 on the top, and then 16 through 20, I'm sorry, along the right side, and then 16 through 20 along the top. So uh, if you look through the tech order and you'll, uh, if you have access to it and you see uh, references to PB1 or PB11 or whatever it is, obviously that's, uh, you'll get used to where the buttons are intuitively as you play with it more. Uh, the main button on here is a uh, menu or PB11. You'll, you'll hear that a lot, and that's pretty much the go-to button to be able to get into any further menus, and we'll talk about that here in just a bit. In terms of the buttons themselves, you'll see that there's uh, features along uh, associated with each button uh, that you can manipulate. So, for instance, here on the air to air radar, uh, I can hit uh, PB2 and go through the different bar scans, uh, bar scan 1, uh, four bar, six bar, eight bar, et cetera, as we go. And then frame store, uh, one, two, uh, and zero. Again, we'll get into more details on the systems later on when we get to that. But I just want to show you how, how the buttons themselves work. The cool thing about the Strike Eagle is because it's a multi-crew uh, aircraft, obviously two-place, these buttons on the screens are hot in both cockpits simultaneously. So it does require a bit of crew coordination to, uh, to manage... Uh, the settings so what you don't you guys don't want to have to fight over uh, who's doing what with the buttons because the key here is whoever pushes the button last is going to be the winner uh, so it does require some coordination on, on what actually is set up so let me show you that so on uh, uh, in the front cockpit let's say I'm the pilot I jump in the cockpit on the ground and we're going to set up the uh, the radar 
And for whatever reason, I want uh, a six bar scan, frame store one, let's say I want GMTR chaff. And again, we're getting, getting details on what those, that stuff is later, so don't worry about it now. And then if I jump into the rear cockpit, uh, go into the same display, I can come behind, come along behind you and set up, let's say as a Wizzo, for whatever reason I want uh, four bar scan, uh, frame store zero, GMTR medium, and so forth. If I go back to the front, notice that those settings are now replicated here. And I can even see those buttons moving or the, the displays themselves moving as the, the guy in the other cockpit is actually changing them uh, as you go. So that's kind of cool on there. So just realize that's a gotcha that those buttons are hot and um, uh, you do have to coordinate that a little bit. On another lesson, we'll talk about being in command of the, of the display. Uh, that means the in command only refers to the HOTAS features themselves. So how do I manipulate the screen with the HOTAS? has nothing to do with the button. So even if I'm in command of the display, uh, uh, I'm sorry, even if I'm not in command of the display, the buttons themselves are still hot in both cockpits. I'll get into the in command uh, functions on, a, on another lesson. In terms of the menus themselves, so let's go into PB11. Again, remember the PB11 is how we get to all the, or the menus on each screen. So we'll go into that. So if you notice, each screen has, a, has a, a series of menu paths as we go. And these are not linked. So I can go to each individual screen and select different functions uh, around the bezel as I go. So uh, notice each one. So I can select ADI. And then if I want to get back out of that to something else, I go back to menu button, uh, select the armament page, go back to the menu button, select the HSI, and so on and so forth. Um, and so, and uh, that's how I select them. Realize that there's, uh, in the Suite 4 Jet, there's uh, three different uh, layers of menus. So this is menu one. Uh, these are the, the most commonly used displays uh, that we'll use uh, throughout the sortie. Uh, you'll go into these uh, different displays quite a bit. Menu two uh, is right here. So these are some lesser used displays. Uh, oftentimes you'll set these up on the ground or in the air and then you'll leave them You'll set it and forget it and then not really worry about uh, setting anything uh, here. And then menu three is even lesser used displays um, based on whatever weapons you might have and so forth. The other thing to take out of it is notice the, the menu uh, number next to PB11 is not the menu that you're currently on. It's the, it's the menu that you will go to if you push the button. So right now we're on menu one. So this is the top level menu display. Menu two, if I push the button, I go into the second level and then notice it says menu th or M3, which is if I, if I push the button, I'll go into menu three and so forth. And then in menu three, if I push just the M, that means menu one or the top level and bam, I'm back into that as I, as I go. So just realize this is on a continuous loop uh, for the, uh, the menu buttons, okay? That's it. That's pretty much the, uh, the basis of the menus. Again, I can go into uh, any screen and choose anything I want uh, throughout uh, that. And um, it's, it's super intuitive to, to go into that. And then notice I can put the same display on, uh, on all the screens simultaneously. So not really a lot of reasons why you want to do it, but unlike other jets where if you choose one if you choose a, uh, a display that's already on another menu, it will auto swap to something else. It doesn't do it in this case. It says, hey, if I want to do it, I'll let you do it. So uh, it's just the way it's set up. Um, so very powerful uh, system and, uh, and the displays are just super uh, user friendly and very uh, intuitive in how you use them. Anyway, that's it. Uh, that's all for me for the first lesson. Hopefully this didn't suck too bad. Uh, so not so out. Hopefully we'll do another one of these soon. See you, bye.